You finally install After Effects and start editing. But after uploading your video, you get no views. All this work for nothing. If only I had some more effects I could use to go viral. If you still don't go viral with your edits, you have to start using these six effects that will boost your edits to the top. Starting from beginner all the way to advanced. And the first effect you will learn is this one frame solid transition. As you can see, I prepared two clips of Batman and I want to add my transition to this point right here where the clips overlap. So we're going to go to the first frame of the new clip, head to the top under layer, click new and select solid layer. Now this window will pop up and the only thing we have to change is put our color to white. Make sure it's white and then press OK. Now we're going to cut the solid layer right here by clicking on it and pressing Ctrl, Shift and D because that's where we want our animation to start. We can delete the axis part. Now we can zoom in a bit and go ahead four frames. One, two, three, four. And we're going to cut our layer once again right here by clicking on it and pressing Ctrl, Shift and D on our keyboard. To delete the rest of it, now we're going to add a mask to cut our portion out. To do that, head to the top and select the rectangle tool. Now what will help you here is if you turn on a grid. To do that, just click on this button right here and select proportional grid. Now we have to find lines that we can orientate off. So select your solid layer and draw a mask to the middle line like this. Make sure that when you zoom in, it's actually aligned with the line. And now we're going to go ahead two more frames to the middle of this layer. One, two. And then cut it again by pressing Ctrl, Shift and D. And now all we have to do is right click onto the new created segment, go to transform and click on flip horizontally. Last thing you want to do is turn on motion blur. You can do that by clicking this button on the left right here, which will just make the transition a lot smoother. Don't forget to disable your proportional grid again and now play your edit. Adding this transition won't just make your edits look way better, but also smoothen out your clip so you don't look like a goofy cap cut editor. Alternatively, you can also cut your clip horizontally, depending on your preferences. If you want to do that, just make sure you select flip vertical instead of flip horizontal. Next up, and a bit more tricky, we got this white solid flash. As you can see, I want to add my flash to this clip of Rick Grimes. And the first thing we have to do is add our base. Now for that, again, we're going to use a solid layer. So head to the top, click on layer, select new and press on solid. The only thing we want to check is again the color, make sure it's set to white, then press OK. And we're now going to cut the solid layer where we want it to start. I want mine to start at the second clip. So I'm going to go to the first frame of the second clip with my time indicator. And then while having the layer selected, press Ctrl, Shift and D. Now, as you can see, it cut in half right here. We can just delete the excess part. And then we're going to do the same thing where we want our flash to end, which in my case, is going to be the ending of this clip. Just select the layer, press Ctrl, Shift and D and delete the excess part. Now drag your time indicator all the way to the first frame of your new layer. Zoom in a little bit and then click on it once. Now we want to press T to bring up our opacity property. And we're going to set a key for 100. This keyframe, we want to drag ahead one to the right. So it looks something like this and starts one frame after our solid layer begins. Now we're going to zoom out again, go to the very end where we want the animation to be finished and set another keyframe, but this time put it to the value zero because this is where the animation will be finished. Now why this animation is a bit trickier is because now we have to add a graph because if I play the animation now, you're going to realize it's not going to look great. It's very slow. So to add the graph, we're going to go ahead, select both the keyframes, right click, go to keyframe assistant and hit easy ease. Now we have to open our graph editor right here. Now the way we want to change this is so that the animation plays fast at the beginning and then towards the end kind of slows down. And to actually change the graph, we're going to click on it once and you're going to see these yellow handles and we're going to go ahead and drag the top one down something like this. Don't drag it all the way to the left, but keep it roughly like this. And then also extend the bottom one towards that direction. The final result should look something like this, like a water slide. And now we can play our clips and have a look at it. If you're satisfied with the result, you can close the graph editor again, but also make sure you enable motion blur for a smoother outcome. Next, we're going to create this awesome ripple effect, which will help you if you got some stiffness in your edits. Now, this animation is a bit more tricky because we have to use an effect. But first of all, we're going to start by adding a new adjustment layer. So hit to the top, click on layer, select new and click on adjustment layer. Now cut the adjustment layer again to the clip that you want to put the ripple effect on. So I'm going to go right here and press Ctrl Shift and D, then delete the access part. And now we're going to head to our effects and presets panel in the top right and search for BBC ripple dissolve. If you don't find this effect in your After Effects, make sure to get it from my Discord server link in the description. After you found the effect, make sure to drag it onto the adjustment layer. And now you can see the effect settings in your effects control panel on the left. And there's only two settings we have to change, which is first of all going to be the height. We're going to put that from 30 to 15. The higher you go with this value, the more dissolving you will have. So if you put that all the way up to 300, you will see his face will be unrecognizable. And that's why I like to put it quite low to 15. And then to tweak the animation, make it go a bit faster. We're going to open the animation tuning at the bottom and then put the ease out from 0 to 20. And now when we play this clip, you can see we have this awesome effect. This is especially useful because it's not just popular, but also just looks great. Next up, we're going to add these black bars. And to do that, you can see I prepared three clips from the movie Titanic. And I want to add my bars to the middle clip right here. And for that, again, we're going to create a new solid layer. So click on layer, press on new and hit solid. But this time, instead of having it white, we're going to make it black. Drag it all the way down, press OK and OK. Now, like before, we want to adjust the duration of our solid layer to our clip. Otherwise, it will just be covering all these clips as well. So we're going to go to the first frame of our clip. Make sure the solid is selected and press Ctrl 
shift and D. Now we can delete this excess part. And then we're also going to do the same thing at the end. So we're going to go all the way to the end. Select the solid layer and press control shift and D. And now next we're going to head to our effects and presets panel and search for CC jaws. This is a standard after effects effect. And then we're going to drag it onto the newly created solid layer. Now very important, make sure your time indicator is in the middle of your clip. And what we're going to do now is create a keyframe for the completion and put it from 0 to 80. Now as you might realize it still has these weird spikes which we don't want. So to fix that all we got to do is put the height from 10% to 0. Now while having the solid layer selected we can press U to bring up the keyframes. Now to actually have the bars appear we're going to have to add the animation. So we're going to go to the first frame because this is where I want the animation to start. And I'm going to put the completion back to 100%. 100% basically means that they're not visible. So now when we play the clip you can see that they slowly start fading in. But because we didn't add a keyframe to the end of our solid layer they're just going to stay in the clip. Okay and we don't want that. So we're going to do the same thing but reverse. We're going to go to the end of our solid layer and we're also going to add a keyframe right here and put the completion from 80 to 100. And now when we play it you can see that the black bars fade up. They stay and then they go away again. Now again here we want to add some graphs as well because as of now it looks very stiff. So we're going to select all the keyframes, right click, go to keyframe assistant and hit easy ease. Now we're going to open our graph editor again and this time our graph will look something like this. Now here we don't want particularly a fast animation but rather a smooth one. So we're going to click onto the keyframes once and we're going to start by dragging the ones at the bottom you can see right here all the way to the left. So we're going to drag them out all the way both directions and then for the ones at the top we're going to do the opposite. We're not going to drag them out we're going to reduce them. So we're going to click on the top one right here and drag it all the way to the left. And the same thing other way around we're going to click on the other one and drag it to the right this time all the way. Something like this. Now we can close the graph editor and look at our clip. And as you can see, they look way smoother now. But one thing I like to add with my black bars is a smooth zoom. And now to add that, we're going to go to the beginning again, where our first keyframe is happening. We're going to click onto the clip below it. So this right here is my clip. You can see of him sitting. And we're going to press S to bring up our scaling. Scaling is responsible for scaling up our clip. So this is how we're going to add the zooms. We're going to start, set a keyframe and just leave it with the standard value, which is 100. Then we're going to go to the middle where we have our next keyframe right here. Make sure they are both aligned. And I like to put it up to about 115, depending on the clip. So now I'm going to make it zoom in. And then obviously, because we have to zoom out, animation again we're going to go to the end and we're going to put it back to 100 the standard value and now very important to have both of these aligned we're going to have to apply the same graphs as before so we're going to select all of them again right click go to keyframe assistant and easy ease now we're going to open up the graph editor to change the graph and now it looks the other way around because instead of decreasing the value from 100 completion to 80 percent we're increasing it from 100 scaling to 150 percent that's why it looks the other way around but the procedure is the same so we're just going to click on it and drag this one at the top this time all the way to the left it looks like this left and right and then do the opposite thing for the bottom ones this time. So we're going to drag them all the way to the left. And this one, we're going to drag all the way to the right till it looks like this. And now when we close our graph editor, again, make sure you enable motion blur for the black solid and for our clip. And now when we play the animation, you can see it looks way smoother. And if you don't want to increase your quality from looking like this into looking like this, make sure to check the first thing in the description because I'm still currently running a huge sale in my shop. You can get up to 70% of the presets that I use to make my quality look the best as possible. Limited time offer. Next up, I got something to boost your intros. If you've been watching edits recently, you probably have stumbled up onto this cool glitch text and to do it all we need is to add a new text layer and then we're going to type whatever our character is saying in my case it's going to be i'm and then vengeance but you always want to split the words into one so instead of putting two words into one line you're just going to put word for word once you edit your first word you're going to align the text however you want to have it and then you can also double click onto it and change the font size whatever you like now we're going to add our text effects in my case i want to add deep glow so i'm going to search for deep glow in my effects and presets panel drag it onto the text layer and i'm going to put the exposure from 1 to 0.2 i also want to add drop shadow. So I'm also going to drag it onto the text layer, put the opacity from 50 to 100, leave the distance at 5 and put the softness to 50. Now we want to go to where our character starts speaking, which in my case is going to be about here. I'm going to cut the text before my character starts speaking because obviously I want the words fading up with him speaking. So I'm going to go here, press Control shift and D and delete the beginning of it. Now in this case, Darth Vader speaks the second word about this time. So I'm going to go ahead again and split my text layer here so I can add the next word. So I'm going to cut it by pressing Control shift and D then go to the top layer, double click onto the text select it and replace with whatever my character is saying. Now when you play your clip it should look something like this and to now add this cool glitch effect what we're going to do is we're going to press S on our keyboard while having our text layer selected then zoom in to make it easier and on the left you can now see our scaling values. We have one for the horizontal and one for the vertical scale. What we want to do next is disable this little check you can see right here which says constraint proportions. If we disable that it means we can stretch the text vertically and horizontally individually. So the two values are not linked meaning if we increase one it won't zoom in but it will rather just stretch it. And now we can 
can set a keyframe at the beginning and do the values however we like. I'm just going to start by stretching my text. Then we're going to go ahead one keyframe. We're going to reset the value. So we're actually going to put it back to 100. And then we can go ahead and now I would stretch it vertically like this. Okay, so that it goes up. Then we can go ahead one more, put it back to 100. And then maybe we can one more time just increase both of them. So we're going to enable this check mark again and then zoom both of them in to make it a bit bigger. And then go ahead one more frame and put it back to the normal value. Now I would only put these glitches in the first few frames of the text. Otherwise it's going to look messy and people are going to have a hard time reading it. Now when we play in the beginning, you can see it glitches. You can obviously go way bigger if you would like to have your text glitching bigger or you can keep it small like me. And then we're going to go ahead to the end again when the text is about to transition. And we're also going to set some keyframes at the ending here as well. So we're going to start again, put it to 100, click the check mark again to disable constraint proportions, then go ahead one frame and maybe just stretch it vertically again. Then one more frame ahead, put it back to 100 and then one more frame ahead and stretch it horizontally. I wanted to start a bit earlier, so I'm just going to select all the keyframes and drag them on to the left like this. And now when you see when they're about to switch, it also starts glitching again. But to now match this vibe, we're also going to do the same thing for this word. So the same way we kind of did this animation here, we can do the same thing at the beginning of the next text. So it keeps its unity. If you want to, you can just go ahead and copy these keyframes you did here already by pressing Ctrl and C, then going to the beginning of the next clip and pressing Ctrl and V to paste them. And you can see you now have the exact same keyframes here. Or you can just reanimate them, meaning you can go step by step. And maybe if you, in this case, don't want it stretching widely, you can just put it up like this, whatever you want. In my case, I will just leave the keyframes how they are because I like it. But obviously, this is very dependent on your own preferences. You might like it bigger than me or smaller, however you want for your edit. So play around with the values a bit and make sure it fits your needs. Now, next up, we've got this awesome CTR effect, which looks incredible. Now, again, you're going to need the plugin called CRT Emulator. If you don't have that in your After Effects, check the Discord. And once you install it, we're going to head to the top, click on Window, select Extension and then click on CRT emulator. Now you can see we have this extra window popping up and I'm going to make it a bit bigger so you can see everything. Now the style I like to go for is style 4. So I'm going to click on style 4, make sure that the layer is selected. Okay, so select the layer in your composition, then select style 4 and hit apply effect. Now as you can see, it already looks crazy good, but we're also going to change some settings in here. First of all, we're going to click on rectangle and just have the rectangle tool selected. Then we're going to increase the exposure to like 7 or 8, depending on what clip you use. I like to go for this range. And then we're going to scroll down and put the vibrance, which is currently at zero all the way to negative 22. I personally also like to put some glow on it. So I'm going to put that to two. And now we can click complete and you can see our window is finished. So we can just close that now. And if you play our clip, we have this amazing CRT effect on top of it, which just looks out of this world. If this video helped you, make sure to smash the like button and subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks for watching and see you next time.